from All About the House. I have an organization printable shop on Etsy where I sell printable planners, organization tools like planner stickers, recipe binders, address labels, all different types of printables. I also have a digital paper shop called Paper Cravings and also have um, digital paper overlays if you want to choose your own colors for your patterns, etc. So that's enough about me. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create um, your own labels in Canva. So Canva is a free online image editing program. It's similar to Photoshop, not as powerful, um, not as many capabilities. It can be a bit um, harder and take a bit longer, for example, to align things because there's less um, tools in Canva than there are in Photoshop. But it's really good if you want to get started in graphic design or just have a quick project that you want to do. Um, then it's a really good free online tool. So just go to www.canva.com and then you can set up your own um, username. So one thing I really like about Canva, um, which makes me prefer it more than PicMonkey, which is another online free editing software which you could also do these um, labels in, is that it gives you all like pre-made templates, which is pretty cool. And then within that it's also got pre-made layouts that you can quickly customize to suit um, to your liking. So unfortunately they don't, I'm sure they will in the future, have any templates for labels. So what we're going to do is go use custom dimensions. Now you can make um, your labels any size that you want. The way that I'm going to do it is show you how to put them on a letter sized piece of paper. You could use an A4 size if like me you live in Australia. So you want to choose the finished page size here. So I'm going to change it to inches and I'm just going to use letter size which is 8.5 times 11 inches high and select design. Sorry my computer is being really slow today. Okay so we now have our blank template that we can add our labels to. So one of the things that I like about Canva is it comes with um, elements. So in elements you've got shapes. So if we want to make square labels, you can just click the square or you could do different types. You could do circle labels. They've got heaps of cool different shapes, some nice scallop stars, banners, fancy labels, lots of really nice ones. So I'm just going to use a rectangle, uh, sorry, a square. Could make it a rectangle if you wanted to. And I'm going to make it, I don't want it that big. Remember that this is on an 8.5 um, size piece of paper. So I'm just going to make it a little smaller. Um, that's probably a good size. You can left click and drag to reposition it on your template. So I'm going to go with square. So this is showing my whole piece of paper, but I'm just going to zoom in a bit by pressing the plus sign. Okay, so now I've got one label. I could leave it at that and add some text. Uh, I'm just going to change the color. So if you click the click on your shape and then click up here, you can pick one of the colors they have, or you can click the plus sign and choose a pretty color from the color wheel. So I'm going to go with pink, and then it'll automatically show you the color, which is cool. So I quite like that pink. If you know the hex code, which is the six-digit code, which could be numbers only or letters, then you can just type it straight in to find that color. For example, if you want to make um, packaging stickers that suit your shop branding, if you wanted to make thank you stickers um, in the same colors as your logo, then this is a good way to do it. Okay, so we've got a color. Now I want to add some text. So if you come over to the text option, you can choose from the sort of pre-made um, font, I guess, cluster, I don't know what you'd call these, um, that they've created. So they've already got ones that already have a nice border. If you wanted to add that, I'm going to go with the first one. And left click and drag to move it up. And then I'm going to click on the corner of one of them because I want it to obviously sit on my label. It's going to make a really simple label. You can make a whole bunch of different labels and print them on the same sheet or you can copy the same label onto the rest of the sheet. I'm just going to zoom in again because it's currently cutting off a little bit. So I'm just going to click on it and press the little arrows to move it. So now I have it completely on my label. So I want it to be down a bit more so it's centered so you can feel it sort of snap and the align um, things come up. So these lines that showed up in, there we go, in the middle 
horizontally and the middle vertically means you've centered it on that section. So that's cool, we've got it centered. Obviously I don't want a label that says the new you, that's a bit weird. I'm going to make it a pantry label. So I'm going to call this one sugar and then press control A and I don't want black text, I'm going to make it white so I can see it clearer. And I also want my lines to be in white. So now I have a simple label. What you could do is add a pretty pattern to the background as well. Um, there's heaps of different types of labels that you can do, so I'm just going to show you how to do a few. So we come back to elements and I'll show you how to do one with a pattern actually. Let's go copy, move this one across. Again, it's got the align tool coming up so they're perfectly straight. So when we cut these, we can just get a paper cutter and just do a nice clean cut one so we don't have to sit there with scissors trying to figure out um, if this one's, for example, down here and it's all uneven. We want to keep it aligned. I don't like to leave too much white space between labels because if you leave only a small amount, you can just do one cut and it will cut both of them instead of having to do multiple cuts if you leave a fat white space between your labels. So now I'm going to do one with um, a pattern background. So if I just copy this one and move it across, I'm not going to call this one sugar. This time I'm going to call it... Hmm, what do I want to call it? I might do a thank you tag. You could use this for stickers or tags. If you print it onto full sheet label paper, you can obviously cut and then make stickers. Full sheet label paper, you can obviously buy the Avery brand, but I found it's cheaper to buy um, like Avery sort of compatible type paper. So online labels is a good place and I get mine off eBay and it's actually really cheap off eBay. You can get a lot of sheets for a very... Uh, low cost, so I recommend eBay if you're looking for label paper. Avery is quite expensive. So if we come back to text, we can change the font type if we don't want it to say thank you in that font. You can change it up here. They've got a bunch of different types of fonts that you can pick from. Um, do some nice cursive labels. Oop, didn't look so good. No, nope, that one didn't look good. Let's try, what about Sanchez? That one looks alright. You can play around and use their preset fonts if you wanted to make wedding stickers. You could use this one, like Alex Hart, whatever your names are. You could add that one in. Um, that one would look cool. Or you could do save the date. You could do address label stickers. You could do um, labels that just have thank you as the text. So if we go copy, move that one across. If we just had this one, or you could do hi or hello or thanks or any text that you want. That one looks cool. You could do your shop name. Oops, it's all grouped. Undo. You could do your um, shop name if you wanted to have custom stickers on your packaging when you send out orders. I'm just going to do thanks and oh, it's not letting me choose. Sorry, my computer's being gay. No. Okay, so we're back. My computer has stopped having a hissy fit. So I've changed the text to thanks, and then you could have your shop name. So the text is currently in black. If I wanted to, I could leave it black and put it on a white um, sticker. But since you're printing on white colored paper, that can be a bit hard to see, um, to cut around. So I always use, well, I tend to prefer to use a solid color with a white text. So I change this down to, say, 25. Now let's go a bit smaller. Let's go 20. And then I can move this onto my sticker. Okay, so getting back to where we were before, we wanted to add a background. So come over to background. You can upload um, digital paper if you have purchased some, say, from my shop or another shop on Etsy or you've made your own digital paper or you've downloaded a free pattern from somewhere. You can upload it here or use, they've got um, free sort of textures, but to be honest, they're not that great. If you go to uploads, you can find the image and add it. I've uploaded this rainbow which I'm going to use so you just uh, left click and it will appear on your canvas 
I'm just going to drag it to make it a little smaller and move it to my shape. So I want it to cover my label. Just zoom in a bit to see it a bit better. And press the arrows to move it across. And a little smidge to the left. Cool, so now I've got this rainbow over my labels. But it's covering my text, so if you click on it, you can um, click on your pattern, you can go back, and it will go behind your text. Oops, I want it forward. Because I want it above my shape um, template, but obviously behind my text. So the thank you looks good, but it's maybe a little hard to read. So if we come back to elements, we can add another rectangle, and if I make it, I can leave it at black. And I'm just going to put it behind my thank you as sort of a banner. Cool, so now it's behind my text, it's a little off the edge, so let's just make it a bit smaller. This is one problem with Canva, it can take a while to align things and make sure it's even and resized, which is why I do prefer Photoshop, but Canva is good if you want to get started in graphic design or just do a quick project. So if I decide I don't want these lines around it anymore, I can delete it and um, it'll delete my text though. So I can just come back to the text tool and re-add some text if I want to. So if I wanted to do happy birthday, oops, make that size 20 and let's move it up above it and I'm going to make it um, yellow. The other thing with Photoshop is that you can um, use like a color eyedropper tool. So I could use a pink that's already in my pattern and then use it on my text. Unfortunately, you can't do that with Canva. You can enter in the color code if you know it. Um, but if you're using digital paper from somewhere else, you may not be able to find out the color. So you'll just have to do a close match for that color. So i just go with pink. That'll do. And I change this to, say, a white background. You can make some stickers like that. Um, the other one that you could do is create another copy. I tend to stick with square um, because they're easy to cut by hand. If you've got a silhouette machine, you could always use circles or another shape if you wanted to. In the elements, you could do um, those nice here. The scallops would look nice. I'm going to use one of these curl frames and put that one on top of my label. And bring that up a bit so that's aligned. And I'm going to add just a like strip behind it. So I can actually copy this one. Copy. Bring that one down. And I want to send that to the back. And I can make this one a different color. So if I make it a light blue, it's a bit hard to see dark blue and if I make it hmm, a green color for my background or maybe I'll go purple purple looks alright so mm, white strips maybe not so easy to see if I make that one black it might be easy to see or pink Play around with the colors until you're happy with it. I think I actually preferred it when it was white. Because remember that when you cut this, you won't see this other white. You'll just see this little strip here. Anyway, so you can muck around with it until you're happy with how it looks. And then again, just add some more text. So if I say mm, brown sugar, you could do labels for kids' toys. 
um, name labels if you've got um, want to name school notebooks or you want to make a um, like book plate label like this belongs to you could do freezer storage labels jar labels save the date labels wine bottle labels um, like a decal sticker um, and then print that on the special like vinyl paper if you've got a silhouette machine tons of different types of labels that you can do and make that one a bit bigger that looks alright, they've got brown sugar and you can play around with all the different types of elements uh, probably the easiest way to make labels they've also got this nice outline so if we do another one create a copy, bring that one down and let's change it to a green it's a bit of a yucky color, I don't like that green a bit lime I have to find a nice green. It'll do. And then we add a border. You could do a single border or a double border. I want to make my border white. And this time I'm going to call it, I like that font actually. That font is called Abril Fat Face. What a lovely name for a font. So let's copy that one copy the um, text and then press control V uh, didn't work, it works in Photoshop if you do that, it must not work in Canva Just Abril fat face so if I name this one I could use different colors for um, different colored paper I use labels to organize my color um, colored paper so obviously pink label is pink um, you could make file cabinet labels, you don't have to just use a square you could do um, rectangle labels, address labels, there's so many different types of labels that you could make. Um, this one I'm going to call it Green Lego. And then I could stick this to the front of a storage bin or a um, drawers, uh, stationary drawers, you could do pen labels. So let's make a rectangle label. So it's the same thing, just go to elements and then change it from a square, just shrink it down so it's a rectangle. So if I wanted to, I could choose any size that you want, remembering that this is on an 8.5 by 11 inch piece of paper. And let's say we want to make some save the date labels. So Alex and Sarah, I'm just going to make that white. I pressed Control A to highlight all the text change it to 20 font size oh I want my heart to be white as well and I want the Alex to be white too Oops, wrong one alrighty so Alex hearts Sarah and we made it 20 so we've got that now let's move this up a little bit and Actually, that's a little too high, I might get cut off. Oops. Canva is a little annoying when you want to move things around. Again, it's free, so it's not the best um, graphic design software, but it is free, so, I mean, you could complain, but considering it's free, it actually gives you a lot of stuff. You've got all this, you can use fonts that are normally paid. It's got heaps of different things to give you ideas to create labels, these ones would look really good on top of a jar if you wanted to do paint colors or if you make jam. Um, again, that could be a nice one for save the date. They've got all these really pretty um, labels you could do if you wanted to do business labels, make a logo. They've got lots of different things that spark a lot of ideas instead of, for example, PicMonkey doesn't have any of these sort of pre-made uh, templates, which is why I'm leaning more towards using Canva these days if I've just got a quick project and can't be bothered opening up Photoshop. So it is um, pretty good even if it does have a couple of downsides. So um, you could do this one if you wanted to do instead. Um, Smith & Sons, that one is obviously for a shop but you could call it Smith Family and you could make a um, like a nice sign for your door or for your kitchen and print it out and frame it. 
there's heaps of different types of things that they whoops give you to do. Um, I'm just going to undo that because I just accidentally deleted all my labels. Undo. There we go. It's back. So I don't want this Smith and Sons thing anymore. Just going to try and delete that. Oh, cool. Okay, so getting back to this one, I'm just going to add some standard text. So Alex and Sarah, if you just do the, for example, the wedding date, you might go 12th of the 10th of the 16th, change it to white, and then bring that one down. So now you've got some like save the date labels. You could do address labels in the same format. The other thing that you can do is you can upload clip art. So on Etsy there's heaps of shops selling clip art. There's cute little owls. Um, nautical, love nautical. So many really nice clip art that you can use. So if you're making um, name labels for your children's book cover or you just want some pretty labels so people don't steal your child's stuff, just go copy and if we put their name, so let's just say that your child is called Emily, make it white, Trotchy's an alright font, I'm going to leave it at that font star, but I'm going to make it bigger, let's go 50, and so I've got the name on there, but I want to add some clip art, so on my computer, whoops, I'm going to go to my desktop and search for ladybug because I have some ladybug clip art in my shop love a ladybug just as an example you can use any clip art it doesn't have to come from my shop and it will upload it's still uploading and then you could add um, clip art to this side of the text And obviously I can't see the black on the ladybug now, so I'm going to make this make it pink, green, blue. That looks nice. I like that. So now I've got some cute clip art in there. I can rotate it so I've got it at an angle. So that's looking pretty nice. Up a little bit. So heaps of different types of labels that you can make and if you wanted to print on full sheet sticker paper, it'll make it a label. If you print it on cardstock, you can um, do a hole punch. You could do a hole punch here and make that into a tag. You could do a thank you gift tag. Um, you can do personalized. You could do uh, Merry Christmas from the Smith family. And if you want your labels to be more durable, I recommend laminating them. Um, so I hope you found this video tutorial helpful and it gave you some ideas on how to use Canva to make labels in a um, pretty short amount of time, pretty quick to make once you make a few and you don't have to use the same design for the whole sheet, you can use lots of different designs. But one last thing, keep in mind how close your design is to the edge of the page. So my printer can do borderless printing so that's not an issue, it can do it when it's that close to the edge but some printers won't. So if you want to make labels and for example offer it as um, for sale in an Etsy shop, make sure that you include um, a decent margin. So I'd probably go to about here, usually about half an inch margin because some printers can't do borderless printing and if they don't and a customer purchases it, the label may get cut off or it may not print true to size. So just keep that in mind if you're going to be making labels for sale. Um, so thanks for watching this video, sorry it was a little long and sorry for my computer being really slow, um, I hope you found it helpful.